Hi, we're not forking around. We want you to join us on March 7th, 2020 for the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease and Cancer for Women Conference here in Cleveland, Ohio, um, for anybody who's interested, men or women. And, and it's a fabulous, fabulous conference with really interesting people like Colin Campbell, Dr. Christy Funk, my, my dad. husband. <laughs> Was he the only one of interest you could remember? <laughs> no, I knew, I knew. And we're doing a demo, and um, Dr. Ann Bingham and Brian Hart will all be presenting. And also, we would love to have... There is a fabulous camp, well now camp, for plant-based women warriors. What are the well, dates, Jane? June 4th to 7th, and it's in Gambier, Ohio, Ohio on the Kenyon College, college and, campus. And blah, blah, blah. so crazy, some of the fun, fun things you do that you think, oh my gosh, I have done this for and so decades. many years. So, if ever. Yeah. <laughs> So it's just, it's not, a, it's not a conference at all. It is camp. You're up and moving and playing and interacting with and all kinds of... eating great food. Yes, it's all plant-based. So and we hope to see such interesting people from all over. So we are not forking around. We're serious. We want to see you there. March 7th, Cleveland, Ohio. June 4th to 7th, Gambier, Ohio. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Jane Esselstyn. I'm Ann Esselstyn. And today it's a little bit different. I made Jane do this today. This is, this is me today. Well, I, well I'll I be... I mean, making you do what you're going to do. Well, because it's more of a discussion today. It's not a recipe. It's not working on some sort of delicious uh, menu for you guys. But um, what I'm going to talk about is type 2 diabetes and how a plant-based diet is a great way to manage, not just manage, but to actually prevent and reverse type 2 diabetes. And why, I, I, I was interested in having her explain why you actually wanted me to do it. Well, I actually, in fact, believe it or not, uh, I mean, I knew people got diabetes and I knew maybe you don't eat a lot of sugar. I really had no idea until Jane did her magic. And then suddenly, oh my goodness, it was so clear. So I said, you have got to do one of these little YouTubes just on diabetes. And so okay. here it is today. Well, thank you. I'll take it from here. All right. Bye. I will. Can't wait to watch it. Okay. She's, Again, she's I've seen, seen it. it a million times. Okay. This and this, the way, I'm going to describe this today with some props and some, um, just to allow for other learning styles and understanding the mechanisms behind what is causing diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Um, and a lot of where I have found my understanding comes from <clears throat> some of the presenters I've seen over the years and the research done over the years, mostly by... Dr. Neil Barnard in this book, which is Dr. Neil Barnard's program for reversing diabetes. It is a scientifically proven uh, system for reversing diabetes without drugs. Please check out this book if you know or love anybody with type 2 diabetes or someone who's trying to prevent it, you know, has metabolic syndrome or wants to uh, not have that. But this book is what's so exciting. This book by my friends Robbie and Cyrus or Cyrus and Robbie on the book here. Um, it's called Mastering Diabetes. This comes out in February of 2020. I'm not sure when you're watching this, but this book will be just a, a brilliant way to continue an understanding of how plants and eating plants as your food can really help not just, again, manage diabetes, but prevent it from happening and reverse it. Type two, that is. Okay, so I'm gonna talk right now about what's happening inside the body. This is clearly an artery, a blood vessel, and it's been cut open for your viewing pleasure. And um, it's a silky, beautiful blood vessel. There are all sorts of things that are flowing through our blood vessels. But today, since we're talking about diabetes, we're gonna focus on glucose or sugar. Sugar is um, obviously what we, we eat, different versions of it, but it's called glucose in our body. So we all eat food, chomp, chomp, chomp. It breaks down in our belly. So first we're gonna talk about all of us, people who don't have diabetes at all. Just um, chomp, 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 you break it down in your belly into all different kinds of glucose. So glucose is flowing through your blood vessels and glucose is trying to get into your cells. When glucose is in your cells, You've got energy, you've got awareness, you're ready to like stay awake for the whole movie, you're ready to dance all night long, you've got energy to 
to drive without getting sleepy, to interact with your loved ones and not drift off, but you have to get the glucose into the cells. So how does that happen? Glucose gets transported into the cells with a transport molecule, molecule which is called insulin. Boom, here it is, insulin. Insulin comes over and says, hey, we just heard we ate a meal. So we're gonna take this insulin over here, and then we're gonna dock on right here, beep, 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 and drop off the insulin into the cells, beep, 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 dock on here, drop it off, drop it off. Here you go. There's glucose in the cells. We feel awake, aware. We've got energy to run, to move, to groove, to dance, to yoga, pay attention, be alert, be awake. And the blood sugar level is lower, but we still have some blood sugar in our, in our blood. Okay, that's type, that, that's, that, that's type nothing. That's just a normal, healthy, um, the way that we consume food and get the glucose into our cells with the help of insulin. All right, let's talk about people with type one diabetes for a moment. Okay, people with type one diabetes, they eat food, jump, 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 breaks down their belly, glucose goes flowing into their bloodstream, and people with type one diabetes, they don't make trucks, they don't make insulin. So they can't get the glucose into their cells. And in order to survive, we need to have glucose in our cells just for our simple bill of function, our cells to function and be alive. So thank goodness for whoever invented insulin and we can inject it or have it with a pump into, our body, into their bodies if they have type one diabetes and do just fine. So the next thing I wanna talk about is type two diabetes. And I wish I was a magician and you didn't see what I'm about to do, but I'm about to do cover the cells over here with a little something, something. Okay, so let's talk about type two diabetes. People with type two diabetes, they eat food, chomp, 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 breaks down their belly into glucose, which goes flowing into their bloodstream. People with type two diabetes, they do make insulin. They make trucks. Comes along and says, hey, let's go everybody. I'm gonna transport you here over to the cells. And we're gonna dock on here and drop you off. Dock on, drop off. Dock on, drop off. Drop off. Hmm. What's happened to the blood sugar level here? The blood sugar level is still high. For some reason, these cells have become insulin resistant. This can't dock on, drop it off efficiently. Something's going on. And clearly, it's this white stuff in here. But what this is displaying is something called intramyocellular lipid. Intra, within, myo, muscle, cellular, cellular lipid fat. And this builds up on the cells, actually within the cells, to the point where these, the cells can't get the, the glucose in because the insulin can't sort of dock on or unlock or get it in. There's a wonderful metaphor in Dr. Neil Bernard's book about insulin being a key and unlocking the door so the glucose can get in. This is sort of the truck dropping it off version. Um, so how did this get in here in the first place? Well, I like to break it down into just really simple visual terms. This basically represents oil. And I say oil, I mean olive oil, canola oil, um, extra, extra virgin olive oil, extra, extra virgin, virgin olive oil, coconut oil, um, peanut oil, oil within food, like oil in a salad dressing, oil in a, in a loaf of bread, oil in uh, sauces, salad dressings, just all these, just oil is oil is oil. And let me say again, coconut oil. Coconut oil, coconut oil. Okay, so this then, let's have this represent any sort of the saturated fat in, in meat, in animal, animal uh, protein, uh, namely like pork chops or hamburgers or uh, turkey, chicken, um, fish, all those cells in fish, uh, every cell's got the lipids and I, I have trouble thinking of all the meat because I don't eat meat, um, shrimp, um, anybody here want to chime in? What, are, what animals am I forgetting here? Um, eggs, I'll say eggs. Eggs are just simply animals that aren't alive yet, but it's all the same components. Um, so uh, hot dogs, there you go. And this is dairy, meaning milk, cheese, butter, eggs, yogurt, um, extra virgin 
olive yolk, you know, that, that's oil. <laughs> I would say Greek, Greek yogurt, extra virgin Greek yogurt. Um, sour, cream. sour cream, thank you. Custard, ice creams, um, all kinds of dairy. I mean, dairy, and dairy, the cream in your coffee, all this dairy that is found in places that we don't even really know or expect to find it. And then this is kind of just, oh, and I'll say here also in dairy, I'll say eggs again, because some people think that eggs are dairy, but dairy and eggs are quite different. Um, and this is sort of processed foods. This is the hardest thing for people to give up sometimes. People can wrap their head around no meat, no dairy, no, not using oil, but then the processed food. This is uh, things that make your life kind of easy sometimes. You know, the, the prepackaged things, especially like impossible burgers and stuff, which is mostly made of oils. And um, they say they're plant-based, but there's not a lot of like plant in there. It's sort of oils and, and other components. Um, so Beyond Burger, Impossible Burger, Beyond Sausage, uh, I don't mean to slamming the companies, I'm slamming the ingredients in the, I love that they're making an effort to get people off of uh, animals in their life, but I really would like to have it not have as much oil. Um, and just, I mean like Halloween stuff, things in vending machines. We read an article the other day about kids getting snacks after their soccer games that have more calories than they burned in the soccer games. So I mean like just Chex Mix and all those big trail mixy things that, that might have you know oils and grease in them. So just grease, meat, cheese, out of your diet. And if you're on a plant-based diet and you no longer have the oil and the meat and the cheese and the grease gunking up your cells, the insulin can dock on way more easily and drop off all this all this glucose can get back into the cells quite easily when insulin comes over and unlocks and docks off while keeping your blood sugar level where it should be. Now, I often compare this stuff to hair in the shower drain. If you're taking a shower and you've got hair in your drain, you don't say, oh, I can't use the shower anymore. It doesn't work. I, you know, no, more, no more showering, no more water. That's like saying no more sugar in my diet. Sugar is not the issue. Sugar is not the issue with type 2 diabetes. It's the stuff that's gunking up the cells so that they won't work properly. So pulling the hair out of the drain is like pulling the grease, the meat, and the cheese out of your diet, and your blood sugar level starts to normalize. So take it easy on your medications because your medications might overwork and make you hypoglycemic. Um, and another comparison I make with this is like having you know, your leaves in your gutter. If it's raining, 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 as it naturally does, and your gutters should, should just drain all that water down, they're not going to work properly if your gutters are filled with leaf and all the leaf you know, breakdown. You need to just clear it out. That's like clearing out the grease, the meat, and the cheese from your diet. OK, I hope this helps you understand the possibility of a plant-based diet helping to reverse and prevent and reverse type 2 diabetes and help maintain level blood sugar. This actually has been supported by the American Diabetes Association for a couple of years now. There's wonderful articles out there by Dr. Neil Barnard. These guys have amazing research they're working on. And um, Carolyn Trapp also has some wonderful papers out there. If you want to research it further, please do so and share this with anybody you know and love who's dealing with type 2 diabetes or wants to prevent it. Thank you.